All right, guys, what's happening? I figured I'd do a quick video here. This is uh, Volkswagen transmission information. Uh, we got a guy in the garage that's working on his bus, Musty One. Darren, my buddy. I gave him a box that I'd built for a bus, and uh, the guy tried to put it in his bus with a car nose cone on it and a car hockey stick, and uh, he had all kinds of problems. And uh, I had a Rancho tranny here. I switched the ring gear over and uh, took that transmission down to the the parts store that I built trannies for. He put the same nose cone, same shift fork, or same hockey stick, and had the same problem. Popped out of first and third. So the chances of having both trannies be bad are slim to none. Uh, each time I do one of these trannies, I take it down the scooters and put it in the jig and make sure everything shifts properly and is in the right position. Now, the nose kind of thing on a bus is a very sensitive deal. I don't build bus transmissions because of this. I had a, a customer call me the other day and wanted a bus tranny, and I, you know, I really do not not interested in building it because very few people have the correct nose cone. Uh, you can buy the correct nose cone from Airco out in California. The hockey stick alone is $200. That's for uh, the selector stick. It's 200 bucks because it's, uh, it's a special stick. The position that it's been in, the way it grabs the uh, selector shafts in the transmission is different on a bus. And the other thing that's different on a bus is the location which this rod runs through the shift uh, nose cone. Uh, it's lower on a bus, it's higher on a sedan. So if you put a, a nose cone out of a bus, or a nose cone off a sedan on a bus, it'll have the shift rod out of uh, angle and it won't be properly aligned. The shift rod should be straight, parallel with the uh, hockey stick. Shouldn't have to push it up or pull it down. Uh, this is a car, a car nose cone. We'll have the uh, bolt holes will be offset. Uh, bus, they're side by side. It'll be a 211 part number, not a 113. That uh, designates car. 211 is a bus. Here's the hockey stick out of the nose cone. Uh, there's a couple different shapes of these, you know, the car is different than the bus. And then uh, also, this looks like uh, one that somebody's tried to change over to work either way. It's got the detent screw on both sides for the grub screw. So, you want to make sure that your nose cone says 211 on it and that it is for a bus. This is not for a bus. 113 is a car. And, uh, the nose cones for buses are very rare. Uh, if it's popping out of first gear, uh, usually these, uh, got a couple first gears here. Here's a wide one, and uh, here's a narrow first out of a super early. The synchro's, uh, there we go, we got the synchronizer, and then we have a synchro ring, and the ring is what holds the, the car in gear and drives it down the road. This is a slider. This engages over that, and it locks the two together. But what happens is these dogs on the synchro hub get rounded off and if they're all rounded off and they're real shiny you want to take a punch and knock them off leave the good ones and it won't pop out of first anymore more than likely your issue is a shift rod alignment issue uh, it's probably not pulling it all the way into gear with the nose cone that you have because it's not the right one those are both off of a car because the uh, mount holes are not side by side. So do some research on the uh, the nose cone, the difference on the nose cones, and the difference on the shift forks, or sh uh, shift rods. I don't know why I keep calling it a shift fork, but it's a shift rod. Uh, if you want, you can take your other transmission apart. You'll see the shiny ones on here. You just snap them off with a punch and put it back together and it won't jump out of gear. But more than likely, it's the uh, incorrect hockey stick in there and the wrong uh, nose cone on the transmission. It should have a 211 part number. Here's a, a bus case over here. Give you an idea what the part number would look like. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. See, it's a 211 part number that designates uh, bus. Or type three, so it has the mounting positions for the bus mount, and uh, 
this is a bus case that was in a thing. A uh, thing has the same type of a bus mount on it. So thing and a bus case are the same. But anyway, I hope that uh, helps you out a little bit on the transmission. Uh, if you want to take that nut off, you can put that uh, lock plate on there. You probably need to torque that down to like 140 foot pounds. Uh, there's a couple of those little lock rings. Usually they'll put a little Loctite on that and they never come loose. It just depends on if the tranny came in with a lock plate or not. So that's, uh, that's that. I hope that information helps you a little bit. This uh, synchro ring on the first and second gear. Here's the first gear. Here's the second gear. The synchro ring is made onto the uh, gears. Uh, it can't be pressed off. That's why uh, if you get a tranny from Rancho, a lot of times you'll find some of these broken off. And those are the bad ones. It's common practice. Here's the uh, fourth gear or third gear, and you can see how this synchro ring is pressed on. It's two pieces there. And usually in a race car application, when you hear welded third and fourth, this is where they TIG weld the uh, synchro hub to the gear so it doesn't spin. And the reason that it would spin is because the car is actually driven off the synchro hub, not the gear. So a lot of people think the the gear actually drives the car down the road, but it's actually these little dogs that lock it into the uh, slider, and that's what makes the car drive. And uh, once those little dogs get rounded off, it won't engage into the slider, and you know then you don't get any uh, you get grinding, or you'll get it where it spits the gear out, you know, because it's rounded off. Sometimes the slider can be bad, and. Uh, with the slider, those are uh, bad. A lot of times what you'll see is sometimes people will actually cut grooves. They'll cut some of these out to make it shift faster. Some of the high performance uh, sliders are done like that. Let me see if we got one here. And then the hubs are the same way. You can see where somebody's removed some of these off the hub. And that's so it slides through there quicker. But anyway, I got a hub here assembled. There's a, a third and fourth hub with the uh, slider on it. Yeah, it. Slides one way and goes into one gear and slides the other way and goes in the other gear. So hopefully that helps you. Definitely got the wrong nose cone there though. Don't put that on there because it's gonna cause you problems. That's probably the issue with the transmission that's in the bus. Although it'll partially engage it, it won't engage all the way. And usually it's third, third and first gear, not just first. So you're sort of lucky in that aspect. But, uh, yeah, I've got one more transmission uh, over here. So uh, this got a straight arm on it. It's uh looks like a 12 volt case. Might be a 12 volt case on another 68 maybe, 67. But uh, might be a 66. It looks like it's a short axle. And then I've got one other transmission that I gotta bring in that's a, a race box that I'm gonna be going through. So you can see the, uh, uh, yep, there you go. There's another car nose cone. Bolt holes aren't side by side. I think this is one of them that you have and it's got a, a 113 part number on it also. So looking for that uh, 211 part number for a bus. And uh, the nose cones and the, the selector shafts are really rare. So I junked out a couple of bus cases, but I didn't have the uh, nose cones. So uh, as far as finding a nose cone, I won't be able to do that for you. You'll have to go contact Airco because uh, I ran into that last time with uh, with the training that you have. Uh, the customer is wanting to make his own uh, hockey stick and uh, modify a car nose cone to work on a bus. And I'm sure there's guys out there to watch this video and say that you can do that, but it's more troublesome than not. Uh, you gotta drill a hole in the right position and then you have the binding issue on the shift rod that we talked about because the uh, rod comes out of the wrong location. And that right sparkles. So anyway, hopefully that helps you out. And uh, like I said, call me if you need to and uh i'll get on the scooters and uh i know he doesn't have a he has a shift rod there or a selector shaft i can show you and i'll do a comparison of a car and a bus 
and I can show you the two nose cones uh, also. Uh, I know the uh, shift rod is pretty pricey from Erico, and the nose cones are like hen's teeth, as uh, Scooter's dad used to say. Very rare. Uh, so that's the first question I always ask. If somebody wants a bus box rebuilt, do you have the proper nose cone? And uh, I think that throws some people off, but that's why. If it says 113 on it, it'll never work in an early bus. So, and by early bus, I mean 67 and earlier. So, gear reduction box. Uh, 68 bus, like my bus, has a, a bus transmission in it, which is a completely different setup. Same gears, but different case arrangement. So, uh, hopefully that helps you out. You get out here and try to get the shot cleaned up. Got the convertible back in here. And uh, to touch up some rust spots on this. Uh, epoxy primer failed a little bit here and there. Basically on the top, sure the water was sitting on it. And uh, so anyway, we didn't uh, use the matrix on this. We used the PPG epoxy primer. And uh, I'm going to hit it with some uh, matrix this time. And uh, hit some of this... Uh, Real rusty stuff back here with some etch primer first. I'm gonna go ahead and acid etch it and then uh, epoxy prime it. And uh, see where we're at. Now, this one doesn't have a whole lot of work to do on it. And I'll get this one in the paint shop and get it uh, painted blue, Malibu blue. And uh, get this thing out of here. That's my uh, next project. I've been working on the Hondagler, and uh, it's a lot of work on this car. Still haven't got the sunroof piece. I haven't heard from Ron. He's disappeared again, so that's all right. I can finish this up. I'll make that sunroof work. And uh, I got the valve spring for my big block head, so we're going to be reassembling those here soon. He did bring my spring back. I got to dig all the retainers, keepers, and uh, cups up and stuff. And uh, finish putting these heads together. So, uh, yeah, hmm. busy, busy. Still got the 356 uh, Porsche motor there. If anybody's interested in that, I think Andrea put that on eBay. So, uh, three grand, take that home. Not 2300. Somebody offered me 2300 for the uh, for the motor, but uh, I thought that was a little light, being that the motor is uh, as complete as it is. It's got the clutch, the pressure plate. The muffler, the fan belt, you know, the generator, it's uh, it's pretty complete. Everything but the carburetor air cleaners are on this motor, even the rear 10, so, and the mount. So, I'm going to wait for 3000 on this one, and then if I don't get three grand for it, I'll just take it apart and uh, go through it, rebuild it, and uh, sell it running. Uh, we seem to bring good money running, so... Some of the pieces are expensive. I did find some piston cylinders for this for in the $2,000 range. So, uh, you know, it's not a cheap motor to rebuild. That's why it's no big hurry. Uh, if I don't sell it complete, then we'll uh, have to accumulate the parts over a period of time. Uh, I heard the rod bearings are unattainable now. They're $20 a half, so $40 per rod for the two bearings. And, uh, you know, $2,000 for the piston cylinders. The carbs will have to be rebuilt. The heads really aren't a problem and uh, stuff like that. So that's where we're at on that. I'm going to really, I'm going to get Scooter to lay his eyes on that and check the number and we'll find out exactly what we have. And uh, after he looks at it, we'll uh, make some more, make a more educated decision. Uh, from Sandra right in the middle of my video. So but anyway. Yeah, yeah, because she had to need something. What'd you need? For what? Huh? Lifting logs. Lifting logs. Let's go lift some logs. Cutting up firewood. It's just get cold here. It's going to be 20 degrees in, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Crazy. 80 today, 20 tomorrow. So, Andrea, got a friend with a wood splitter. And uh, he's been splitting the wood for us, taking the big logs over and uh, bringing little logs back. So these logs are heavy, heavy logs. But anyway, let me get on the logging. Pull up the 2500. Oh, we got sun here. That flat tire on my lawnmower. I don't like that guy. Alrighty. So what we gotta do? Load these big suckers? 
All right, let me turn this off because this looks dangerous.